You're listening to Bad Dog Agility, bringing you training tips, interviews, and news about the great sport of dog agility. And now, here are your hosts, Sarah and Esteban. I'm Esteban. And I'm Sarah, and this is episode 152. Today's podcast is brought to you by Back on Track. Dog agility is a demanding sport and can be difficult on the body, both the dogs and the humans. Back on Track specializes in dog blankets, beds, and wraps that keep muscles warm and reduce the pain in joints. If you've got a nagging knee, calf, or ankle injury, Back on Track's human products can help get you back in the ring. Visit Back on Track at backontrackproducts.com. Today's podcast is also brought to you by Elite Science. Unlock your dog's full potential with a unique competitive edge solution, 1TDC. One tetradecanol complex is a patented blend of unique fatty acid oils designed to safely and effectively keep joints and muscles at their best to maximize performance and shorten recovery time. 1TDC is the next generation of fatty acids and is used by many current and past national agility champions and world team members. All of our listeners will automatically qualify for a great 1TDC special offer by purchasing online at bda one tdc.com. That's BDA, the number one, tdc.com. Today, we're talking about how to develop your own social network in dog agility. And I know that sounds a little bit obvious. We all kind of do that. We all have our friends and social groups, but I wanted to be a little more explicit about the topic. It's a really big deal to me because I've often looked at this idea of social support versus loneliness in the context of my other career, my non-dog career, and that's as a physician. Uh, both in family medicine and especially working in the field I did, which was uh, wound care, right? People in nursing homes and, and these long-term care centers who are often lacking in the kind of support that they need, not necessarily on the medical side, but in terms of family, friends, and that social support. In medicine, there's long been an understanding uh, with the rise of evidence-based medicine, I should say, that there is a correlation between very poor social support and health outcomes in things as specific as your blood sugar and your blood pressure and other outcomes, especially as they relate to diseases, especially chronic diseases, things that you're going to have for a very long time that you're dealing with. And so I kind of wanted to bring this idea to agility. So the first question I think that people are going to have is, well, why does it matter? You know, maybe that's for health, but this is dog agility. Why is it important to have a social network? I think everyone can kind of know intuitively it's a nice thing to have, but is it really a must-have? A necessary. Yeah. So what do you think about that? I think it is a necessary part of agility, and that's because this is a hobby and a sport where you cannot force everything to go right all the time. The whole nature of dog training, there are ups and downs. You make progress, you know, for a while and then you might go into a lull mm-hmm. for a while. And those times when things aren't going right, that's when you really need that social network and that support. And there it is. You said it perfectly. Agility mirrors life. When do you need that support? When things aren't going your way, when things aren't going well. And, you know, that can be for a variety of different reasons. Some of it can be purely training related. So a lot of people are going to think, well, this is something I can train myself out of. But I think that's why you want to have that social support. And that's when it's really going to be beneficial to you. Now, there's there's other contexts to talk about, things I think that are a little bit specific to social media. Kathy Keats had a very interesting article. I'm not sure exactly when it came out. We'll put a link to the article in um, uh, the, the show, show notes, notes, right? But she does like uh, mental prep and coaching for dog agility. Kathy Keats does. And she had written an article basically about bullying, right? A more conceptual article, not like a, a very specific or concrete. Kind of a parable. Almost. A parable, right? About uh, sheeps and wolves. Right. And so uh, I think the one thing that I want to say about that article is she kind of had the conclusion that a great way for sheep to deal with bullying, where there's a lot of use of fear, intimidation, isolation of these sheep by the predator, is to stick together. You're going to stand strong, you're going to stick together, and you're going to act kind of as a, as a flock. There's going to be a solidarity there. And, and what and we're saying is you need a flock to stand with. <laughs> get yourself a flock. So th- we're going to get into some detail here. And um, we will also have a link 
to the article that we're drawing on some here from the, uh, I believe it's the American Psychological Association, the APA. So you can look at that as well. So hopefully we've convinced you why it's important to have a social network and to at least examine your own social network. And you should be able to have someone that you can go to, I think, when I think about myself. I want to have someone that I can go to with a training issue. That's one. I need someone that I can go to for emotional support when I disappointed with something and it's not really necessarily a training issue, right? Right. Because, uh, for example, Bad Dog Agility, obviously we do teaching online and coaching and stuff. When you come to me with an agility problem, I'm going to try to fix it in what way? A training way. A training way, right? I'm going to give you a training tip, a handling tip, something like that. That may not be what you are looking for at that moment. That is, That may not be what you need at all. Right. What, what you may need is a podcast that tells you that progress doesn't happen all at once, right? That it's going to be up and down, setting expectations, you know, and, and we uh, have had feedback from people where, you know, some of the podcasts where we're not talking about training tips, we're talking about, you know, how to deal with disappointment or, or things like that, that those really resonate or really help somebody mm-hmm. who needed that at a particular moment. Right. And so, yes, helpful. Yes, part of agility. But I just wanted to kind of show you the nuance difference between the two. Uh, so you want to have that kind of person, too. And I'll even add a third category. You know, we're all people. Sometimes people like to to joke or be snarky. That kind of um, talk too often, in my opinion, finds its way onto social media. And I think that should be done a little bit more. Uh, the, the complaining kind of thing. Right. The gossiping kind of thing. Amongst you and your friends in person, over dinner, by by messenger, but not necessarily in public on your Facebook page or even your Twitter. That is just my personal opinion. But I'm just saying that that's also a different thing you often see in agility, right? That you want kind of support for that. A group of like-minded people with whom you can complain and moan and groan about the state of affairs in general. Right. Right. Kind of all commiserate. Of the three, you know, I, you know, I guess I don't I've, necessarily have to yeah, have that. But, yeah. it, but if you're the kind of person that you need to get stuff off your chest, yeah. then maybe you do you need, need you that. Need you need a safe place, a safe outlet to vent it without people who are going to come after you and cause you more stress, right? Let's say you're or very. Or without you causing other people stress <laughs> unnecessarily, right? Right, right. Or un- unintentionally. So I think those are kind of three. Three categories subtle, of yeah, people. And they, they could be, you know, sometimes you have a friend that fits all of those. Sometimes you have multiple people. You know, you, you can go to one person for training advice. You can go to another person for emotional support. Um, so it doesn't have to always be the same person. Right. So now we've established emotional support is, is helpful, it's important, and the different kinds of support that you're looking for. So how exactly can you go about getting it? So let's say you're listening to this and you're like, you know, I don't really have someone I can go to for straight up agility stuff. I have to wait until class the next week and then wait after class for 10 minutes to try and talk with the instructor for five. You know, like, where do I go? How do I do this? Well, let's talk about a couple of things. And first, this is mentioned in the article, the idea of casting a wide net. So you want to look everywhere you could possibly get the support from. And so... The obvious places are going to be your instructors, right? Whether they're online or live, your, your instructors are kind of your first line. But coming through the ranks for, you know, now over a decade in, in dog agility, uh, closing in on 20 years, right? That, um, your fellow classmate, the experienced competitor, someone that you are seeing doing something really well. If I see someone with a great seesaw, I'm struggling with a seesaw. Maybe I'm going to go talk to that person. Right. And they can be a valuable support for you. Right. And so that's what I mean by casting a wide net, because ordinarily you wouldn't think to go beyond your instructor. Some people don't even think about talking with their with their fellow students. And that's why even um, whether it's us with our VIP membership or other online training sites, they try to foster oftentimes um, a community, a community, whether it's on Facebook or forums just a place where people can go lay out a problem, get some responses and and be that support. And that can be very, very helpful to you if you're not a part of that community. Okay. And so aside from casting a wide net, what else can we do? Well, the next one, I think I'm very guilty of not doing. And that's being proactive. You want to be proactive. But what I used to like to do was sit around and mope 
and wait for someone to notice that I was moping so they could come ask me what's wrong. And then I could tell them all my problems or, or ask my question or whatever. And that's just not a great way to do it. What do you think about that? I, I I definitely agree that you need to be proactive, not just in the moment when you're upset, right? Going and, you know, soliciting um, the support that you need from your friends, but also being proactive in creating this social network to begin with. You don't want to wait till you have a problem and then try to go to find somebody who can, you can talk to it about. You want to kind of develop a rapport and a friendship and I, one thing that I have noticed as, as an online instructor, we need people to videotape, right? Cause we're not there live. We need them to send us videotape. And every once in a while, I'll have some, a uh, course participant who will say, well, I don't really have anybody to videotape me at shows. And my response is, okay, that's your homework, right? It's, there's 200 people at a dog show. It doesn't have to be your, you know, BFF, your best friend that videotapes you. You know, ask anybody. Most people are more than happy if you say, you know, I'm sorry. Have some sorry. kind of arrangement right. or barter agreement or, or, or just, you know, talk to somebody and say, buy you them know, a sandwich. You just happen to sit down next to anybody and, and you talk to them, you know, what kind of dog you have. And then you say, I'm running in a little bit. I really like to get video. I don't really know anybody here. Would you mind videotaping me? And most people are going to say yes. And, and that could be the start of, of a bigger social network or it might just be for that one moment. But the point is you can't sit there and, and be so shy, so, so afraid to talk to people that you don't know that you don't get in that moment what you need, which is somebody to videotape, but also more globally what you need, which is a, you know, a support network. So one of the things when I was reading this article that I remembered was um, a line from one of our favorite comedies, which is She's the Man. And she says, flow is flow. <laughs> and it's this great scene that we'll have a link to in the show notes where in She's the Man, she, uh, very short, uh, short summary. It's a girl that wants to play on the guy's soccer team. And so she dresses up like a guy to prove she's good enough. And so she's talking to her guy roommate who thinks that she's a guy and she's teaching him how to talk to girls. And she says, just ask me anything. Ask me if I like cheese. And he's like, but, but now we're just talking about cheese. And she said, doesn't matter. Flow is flow. So that's what we want you to remember when you're out at agility. It doesn't matter what you're talking about with these people. You can tell them, oh, your dog is so cute or talk about what breed of dog they have. Flow is flow. And that's how you're going to start creating those friendships at the agility trial. I like it. And that's a great example. And our third tip is going to be use technology. So social media obviously just completely revolutionized the sport. And you can use that to your advantage, even if you're not in these uh, training sites where they have forums and support and things like that. Everybody, I think, has access to uh, Facebook, Twitter, where you can post something and get a little bit of support. And, and, and I think that um, the flip side of that is not just eliciting responses from people, but also being supportive of other people. And, and I'll say that there's plenty of people that are going to listen to this and say, well, Facebook is like my biggest problem. Facebook is where all the problems oh, come yes. from. Okay. And to those people, I would say, yes, that's true. There are, there are a lot of, there's a lot of nastiness on Facebook, but learn how to, to, um, be proactive about who you let into your Facebook life. You know, it's, right. it's or easy even creating to- those groups. In another podcast, we talked about how to create groups and putting specific people in them. Whether it's a couple of your friends and instructors, you know, Sarah and I have groups where it's just me and her and we post things in there um, that, you know, we're not posting on our wall, whether they're relevant to our family life or business life or or whatever. And um, uh, trailers for movies we want to see. And that's a, a way for us to communicate. But we use that social media to continue that relationship that we have together. We use it to enhance our actual relationship. Right. And so you just have to kind of take responsibility for how you use Facebook. It's easy to get caught up in, did you see what so-and-so posted on the wall and kind of, kind of the train wreck mentality where you, you can't help but watch the, the craziness, but try to protect yourself from that. Just don't follow it. Don't follow people who, who are, um, you know, have that kind of drama that you don't want, even if sometimes you feel drawn into it, you know, in that way. Unfollowing and the amount of unfollowing that I've done in the last year or two has been a tremendously helpful 
tool, especially as far as time management. I think a lot of you out there know what we're talking about. So you want to build these social networks, but you want to do it in a non-time consuming way. Right. And I think one more thing that I would say about, about Facebook and about building your support structure is you want actual real support. So this is not the same as building a massive Facebook following, a massive number of friends or, or 200 people that are going to like your very right, cute or, picture of a puppy or, or you posting, posing with your dog having a ribbon. Right. Or even posting things that you're struggling with and having a whole bunch of people comment and, and kind of soliciting advice that way. Yeah, I, I agree with that. I think it's important to look for kind of that deeper social support. Yes, totally awesome. You know, 100 people, 50 people, whatever, are liking your pictures and you get to brag about your dog. There's a lot of positive reinforcement there. You know, I like to do that, especially when I was running uh, Gitchy, Susan's dog. So Susan can get some of that reinforcement too, you know. I'm not just getting all the glory as the handler. But what we're talking about is when you are having those very serious issues, something that is really weighing heavily on your mind, right? Your dog continues to drop one bar. You can't get that double Q. It's over and over. And now three months later, you feel like quitting. That is someone who doesn't need 200 people liking them, liking a photo of them winning a blue ribbon one day. That's someone who needs to sit down and talk with someone who can really uh, support them, hear them, and help them through this. All right. Well, I think that does it for this podcast. But if you're listening to this podcast, there's something Sarah and I would like to say, and we mean this very seriously. If you're listening to this, you will always have at least two people who are here for you and will be your social support in this great sport of dog agility. And that's me and Sarah. That's absolutely true. I 100% agree. We are here for all of you. And that's it for today's podcast. Today's podcast is brought to you by Back on Track and Elite Science and also NTI Global. New year, new gear. Visit shop.ntiglobal.com for the widest selection of dog agility tunnels for both competition and backyard training. Tunnels are made from durable vinyl in black, white, or purple ring color. Known for free shipping, more options, high-quality products, and low prices, NTI Global has got you covered. Also offering tamer and anchor weight bags, along with a full line of accessories and agility storage solutions. Need your agility gear in a hurry? Don't forget to check the in-stock selection. Visit shop.ntiglobal.com and use promo code BADDOG2017 for 5% savings off today. Promo code is good through February 28th, 2017.